to another video. This is Bruna. Today we are going to be learning this super super cute pattern right here, this flower pattern. It's super aesthetic and super super groovy as well. I love this. I have actually created this flower. This is my own design. You probably have seen a couple of patterns very very similar to this one but I haven't seen any exactly like this and also following the steps that I'm going to be using. So I basically came up with my own flower pattern, my very first own flower pattern that I haven't seen anywhere out there. <laughs> so I'm pretty, pretty excited to share this one with you. And I wanted to create a super aesthetic, groovy 70s and 80s inspired flower because I have something coming up in a couple of weeks, maybe not right now, because you can still use this for summertime. Maybe I'm going to be doing that for autumn time because that's a little bit colder. So I have two things that I wanna create and I want to use these flowers into that pattern. <laughs> so that's why I decided to create them so that you know how to make them and also you can use for now that it's summertime, you can attach this in any project you want. I've seen a lot, a lot of projects where people attach these flowers appliques into the crochet top, crochet cardigan, crochet jumper. So you can actually use these for anything that you want, even earrings. Yes, I think I'm gonna use these two here for earrings. So yeah, this is what we are going to be crocheting today's video. So if you do enjoy today's project and tutorial, don't forget to leave your massive thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to watch more fun crochet tutorials just like this one. So before I move on into the tutorial, the actual tutorial, these are everything that you are going to be needing. These are all the materials. First, we have the yarn. You can use any yarn you want. You can see here that I've used three different yarn weights to crochet my flowers. So these two here, I made with a fine number two yarn. These ones here I've created with a DK yarn, which is the one that I'm using now in the tutorial. And this one I have created with a chunky yarn. So you can actually use any yarn that you want a very thin yarn or a super chunky yarn so it's going to be up to you so this is the yarn that i'm going to be using this is the bravissimo from teslan.com i'm going to be linking that in the description and these are the two shades i'm going to be using pink and purple these two here they look so beautiful together and then for our tools i'm going to be using a measuring tape just so i can measure things for you guys if you are a beginner you might need to use a stitch marker just to mark one or two little stitches down that I'm going to be explaining that to you. And then a small pair of scissors, tapestry needle to weave in all the ends in, and last but not least, a hook. This one is a four millimeters hook, this beautiful sunflower hook that I bought from Etsy. If you wanna buy one for yourself, if she still have some available, I'll link that in the description below as well, because you guys always ask me about this hook and I bought it from Etsy. So I'll link all her info in the description below. So this is everything I wanted to mention here at the beginning. And now we can start with the actual tutorial on how to crochet these beautiful, groovy, aesthetic flowers. So choose your very first shade. I'm doing the pink. So the very first thing we are going to be making is a magic ring. You can also chain three and join into the very first chain to create a little circle. I prefer using the magic ring method because it makes the middle of the flower super, super tight, as you can see, and you don't really see any gaps right in the middle. So I prefer doing with a magic ring. So how you make a magic ring, you're gonna get the end of the yarn. You're going to be holding it against here, your index and middle finger. You're going to be wrapping the working yarn that it's attached to the yarn ball you're going to be wrapping it around your fingers and then you're going to be crossing it right here on top of the previous yarn the end of the yarn and you're going to be moving it forward at the back of this very first yarn and then you're going to be inserting your hook into the very first yarn and you're going to be pulling the other yarn through the first yarn the first loop here and then from here you can just release the yarn of your fingers and now you have the magic ring 
And what I like to do before I even start with the very first round is just to create the very first chain in which is not gonna count and make it nice and tight just by moving it up and down like this and it's going to tighten the very beginning here of the magic ring so that from here we can start the very first round. So let's begin. So first we are going to be chaining two. So one, two, and then going around here the magic ring, we are going to be creating 11 half double crochets. So the chain two at the beginning does count as a stitch, all right? And if you want already to place a stitch marker into the second chain from this chain two, you can, because then you know that this is going to be the chain that you're going to be slip stitching once you create all the half double crochets. So how you create a half double crochet, you're going to be wrapping the yarn around the hook, you're gonna go around the magic circle, you're going to pull up a loop, and then all you have to do is to yarn over and pull through all the loops together, just like this. So that's how you crochet a half double crochet. And we are going to be creating 11 half double crochets in total. It's going to be 12 stitches counting the chain two at the beginning. So once you have completed the 11 half double crochets, we are going to be pulling the end of the yarn to close the magic ring. <laughs> oh God, what happened there? <laughs> there we go. It did close somehow. <laughs> so now to join the two sides together, you're gonna go right into that stitch where the stitch marker is. You're going to pull up a loop make it nice and tight i always do that and then you're gonna go through the very first loop by creating a slip stitch we are going to be leaving this stitch marker here because we know that this is the very first stitch and remember that this one here does not count as a stitch because this is the slip stitch so here going around we should have 12 stitches in total and we are going to fasten off because we are going to be changing now into the next shade so that we can create the petals so i do a chain one and then i cut my yarn pull to release and make it nice and tight so i'm just gonna be counting here with you how many stitches i have here as well remember that this one here does not count as a stitch because this one is the slip stitch stitch. So we are going to be having 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 in total. All right, so now we can move on into creating the petals. So choose the next shade you wanna do. I'm doing in purple. So with the purple yarn, we are going to first create a slip knot to attach this yarn into the very first round. And what I like to do is to attach my yarn before the slip stitch. So this one we are not counting as a stitch, so I like to attach my yarn into this one here. So we have the one with the stitch marker, the second one, which is that one, you can see there is a little loop here, and this is the last one. So I attach my yarn into that stitch or any other that you want, I just prefer this one, and you're going to be joining into that stitch with a single crochet. And then from here, we are going to be chaining seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you should have something like this. We are going to be skipping that very first chain. We are gonna go into the next one and we are going to be creating a single crochet. We are not counting the one that it's around the hook, just the actual chains. And then now here into the next five chains, we are going to be creating single crochets on top. So we are going to be having six single crochets in total. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So once you have your single crochets completed, we are going to chain one 
and then we are gonna go back into the same stitch where we have the very first single crochet and we are going to be slip stitching right into that very first stitch so now here we have the slip stitch stitch you see that it's it looks like a stitch so it is a little bit confusing so we are going to be skipping that and we are going to go right into the stitch where the stitch marker is and we are going to be creating a slip stitch so now we can remove the stitch marker just gonna fix here the yarn so that it's not on the way and then from here we can repeat the same as we did here so you're going to be finding the next stitch my one is this one this loop here so I'm going to be creating a single crochet right into the next stitch and then we are going to be repeating the same as we did here so first we are going to be chaining seven And then we are going to be skipping the very first one, not counting the one on the hook, going to the second chain, and then we are going to go down into this chain with single crochets, and you should have six single crochets in total. So we have the six single crochets, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you go into chain one, go back into the same stitch where the very first single crochet is. And then we are going to be slip stitching into that stitch, find the next one, slip stitch the next one, single crochet, and now we can start the stems again. So following the same steps and we are going to be repeating this same steps all the way around. So one stitch will be for the stem and the next one will be for the slip stitch, stem, slip stitch, stem, slip stitch, stem, slip stitch. So we have 12 stitches in total. So I'm going to be repeating the same all the way around and then I'll meet you right here at the end. So this is how it should look like once you have the six stems completed and you should have one last stitch left right here to create this slip stitch so that you complete the pattern. Round two basically. So we are gonna go into the last stitch and we are going to be creating a slip stitch. So from here, we are going to now start round number three, which is the last one. So we are going to be turning this way and we are going to first find the very first single crochet that we've created right at the beginning. So you're going to go through that stitch and we are going to be creating the very first single crochet and you can place a stitch marker right into this stitch so you know that this one is the very first one from round number three. So we are going to do that. There we go. And then from here we are going to be working going around the single crochets here. So you're going to be finding the very first stitch, so we are going to be working at the bottom and top of the single crochets. So find the very first stitch, create a single crochet, and then the next two we are going to be doing half double crochets. So one and two. The next two we are going to be doing double crochets, so one, two. So when you get here at the top, you're going to be having the last single crochet here at the bottom and then the top of this single crochet. So we are going to be doing two double crochets into the next stitch. And then two double crochets into the next one that is the single crochet at the top so it's kind of like a continuation so one and two 
So we are going to be having four double crochets here at the top, two into this stitch and two into the next one. So now we are going to be working on the other side of the single crochets, which is the top. The next two we are going to be doing double crochets. So we are going to be repeating the same as we did here on this side. So double crochet into the next one and the next one here. And then the next two we are going to be doing half double crochets. And then here at the end we are going to be having two stitches left, one from the single crochet and one that is the chain one space. So go into that last single crochet stitch and create the first single crochet and then the last one it's gonna go right on top of that chain one. Just grab one little stitch and create the last single crochet so that the sequence is now completed. So following the same steps as here on this side we are doing exactly on the other side. So once you have this petal completed, we are now going to be creating a single crochet in between the petals right on top of the slip stitch. But we are going to be using round one stitch to create the next single crochet. So we are going to be kind of skipping that um, slip stitch and we are going to go right into round one stitch right where we did that same slip stitch we are going to go right on top of that and create a single crochet into that stitch and then from here we can continue into the next stem and create the next petal so find first the very first single crochet single crochet right on top of that and then from here we can follow exactly the same so single crochet into the next stitch, one half double crochet into the next two stitches, double crochet into the next two stitches, two double crochets into the next stitch, Two double crochets into the next stitch, one double crochet in the next two, one half double crochet into the next two stitches. And then here at the end we should have two stitches left so the first one single crochet and then the last one grab one little stitch from the chain one and single crochet go right on top of that slip stitch stitch using the stitch from round one and create a single crochet right on top of that and that's all we have to do this is what we are going to be following going all the way around. So here we have all of the petals completed and I left this very last one here to do with you, the very last slip stitch. So let's go right here. So once you have finished the last petal, we are gonna go into the last stitch that we have right on top of the slip stitch and then we are going to slip stitch right here and then into this stitch here where the stitch marker is we are going to go through this stitch and we are going to be slip stitching to just to join the parts together and that we complete round number three so a slip stitch and now we can fasten off so remove the stitch marker and then we are going to chain one, cut the yarn, and then pull this yarn and make it nice and tight. So here we have it. So that's how you finish round number three. So now we can just kind of move the petals around just to straighten them a little bit. 
and that's your flower completed. So now the last step that we have to do is to turn the flower here on the reverse and we have to weave all of the ends in. I'm going to be starting with this one here that was the last yarn that we fasten off. So I'm going to be threading this yarn into my tapestry needle. I'm going to be taking this yarn close to this other purple here. So we are just going to be moving it right here. There we go. And then you're going to be threading this other yarn into the tapestry needle so that we can weave both of these together. I'm going to be cutting here at the end so that they are the same length. And now with this yarn, I'm going to be weaving right here into these stitches here. So once you've done that, we can now cut the yarn, the end of the yarn and the weave end is done. So now we have to do the same with this one, but then we are going to go around the middle of the flower. So yeah, that was the last step for you to crochet this super, super pretty, groovy, aesthetic flower. <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm going to be calling this pattern yet. I was thinking of calling it the groovy flower pattern or something like that. If you have any name suggestions, let me know in the comments. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. I really, really love this pattern and I really wanted to share with you. And you can make in any color you want. Look at this one. This one is so pretty. And then this other one as well. Oh, look at all of them together. They look so pretty. I really, really love them. And I really hope you enjoyed as well this super quick tutorial on how to crochet this super pretty flower. And let me know in the comments how it was for you to follow today's project. And also don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you end up using this flower applique pattern in any of your projects because I would love 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 to see the colors you are using the yarn that you are using and also where you're going to be using them I really hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and if you did make sure to leave your massive thumbs up as you always do and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to turn on the little notification bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video okay everyone I think I'm ready to say goodbye and thank you so so much again for watching today's video and I see you next week. Bye!